What's surprising about the Lisbon experience is not the outcome, which was predictable, especially since a similar lack of violence was observed when England played a soccer match in the Netherlands, where the possession of marijuana by adults is de facto legal. During the Euro 2000 tournament, rather, it is the lack of attention that the story received in the U.S. media and among policymakers. Although the Lisbon experiment was not conducted in a scientifically controlled environment, it nevertheless prompts the question, would the legalization of marijuana reduce alcohol-related harms in society? In a country where, according to the Department of Justice, alcohol plays a pivotal role in some two-thirds of all cases of violence suffered by an intimate, such as a spouse, boyfriend, or girlfriend, and is responsible for approximately 100,000 sexual assaults among young people each year, this is a serious question deserving of serious discussion. Ironically, just a few years later, the same American media that turned a collective cold shoulder to Portugal's unique experiment in pot tolerance became enamored with a campaign by university presidents to spur a national debate about whether to lower the drinking age in the United States to 18. This campaign, dubbed the Amethyst Initiative, aims to encourage moderation and responsibility as an alternative to the drunkenness and reckless decisions about alcohol that mark the experience of many young Americans. Are these university presidents also pushing for a debate about whether the legal use of marijuana could provide an alternative to drunkenness and reckless decisions about alcohol? Not as of this writing. So we are left with a puzzling dichotomy. Despite knowing that a large percentage of assaults and injuries on their campuses are related to alcohol, university presidents are still willing to consider lowering the legal drinking age. Yet these same officials will not even discuss the idea of granting students the legal right to use a substance that is less likely to lead to a violent behavior. This is just one example of our nation's perpetual double standards surrounding the use of marijuana and alcohol. How did we, as a society, end up in this position? Why do we criminally arrest or discipline people for consuming a substance that is not associated with acts of violence, yet tolerate and at times even celebrate the use of another that is? Why do we embrace the use of alcohol, a toxic substance whose consumption is responsible for hundreds of acute alcohol poisoning deaths in the United States each year, while at the same time condemn the use of marijuana, which is incapable of causing a fatal overdose? Although marijuana remains the third most frequently consumed drug of choice in America, trailing in popularity only behind alcohol and tobacco, these questions have never been addressed at length by either the media or America's elected officials. This is about to change.